Madam President of the University of Texas, Austin, I have with me here a number of people. Uh, the mayor, uh, as you all know, we like to be on city manager, Mark Carr, uh, and our chief of police, uh, Chief Dalton. Uh, I'll make a brief statement and then uh, make a comment by uh, others, and then we'll be open to uh, questions. As you know, we had a uh, Flat of an explosive or a group of explosives on our campus this morning. Uh, we have a protocol to uh, deal with those. We have a very sophisticated uh, uh, crisis management team and uh, safety team. Uh, the start of that is the evaluation of the credibility of the situation. Uh, that starts uh, virtually immediately. Uh, the threat was for uh, an explosive later in the morning. Uh, so our first step is to evaluate the uh, situation. And we are uh, working with uh, uh, city uh, and uh, federal and other governmental uh, joining the team that uh, evaluates this. Uh, we got to the point uh, where we thought the prudent thing to do was to clear our building. Uh, there was uh, always a question about the credibility of the threat. Uh, as you know, there was a threat at uh, North Dakota also. Uh, our evaluation uh, continued, but we could not assure ourselves uh, that this was not a credible threat. Uh, to assure ourselves the other way. Um, and so we thought the prudent thing to do was to put in the buildings and we did that through social media, we have silence. Uh, I must say the buildings were put very expeditiously uh, before the time of the uh, threatened uh, uh, issue. Uh, and uh, we are very confident now working with, uh, again, state, our, officials, federal officials. Uh, we can't go into the details of why we, uh, every detail of why we know this, but we are extremely confident uh, that the campus is safe. Uh, we are allowing uh, people back into the building uh, where we be ready to resume operations uh, very expeditiously. But we do have an issue that once students are uh, in an uncertain mode as to what the class schedule will be in the afternoon. Uh, it is very hard to resume that. So we've canceled classes for the afternoon, not that we would not be in a safe situation to put them on, but once the students disperse. Uh, and there were some reports uh, uh, in the media that classes were canceled, students would rely on that. So we have uh, canceled classes for the day. Full operations will return at 5 o'clock on the campus. Evening uh, events will return on the campus. And again, through a variety of sources, uh, we are very confident our campus is safe. Uh, uh, go ahead. I will just say that uh, it's another example we've been serving over the last few years of uh, major events that occur in our city where our organizations, uh, the university personnel, the state of Texas, federal officials, uh, county officials have worked together in collaborative ways and make sure that we uh, do our absolute best to control the situation. We, of course, learned from each situation in the past. Uh, we continue to learn and do a better job of it. And I'm very uh, gratified to learn um, from President Powers few minutes ago that this uh, threat has abated and then things will be going back to normal. The city of Austin, uh, the city manager, uh, Mark Hott, next to me, active, partially activated the city's EOC earlier today. That's now in the process of being deactivated. Uh, and let me, uh, once again, I said it earlier, but uh, this was a joint effort and we are blessed at the University of Austin in Austin and West with the cooperation that we get from the city and other uh, state and, uh, and, and local government officials, including the, 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 the
of that too. Thank you for uh, all of your help. Jim? Cover the events. Uh, briefly what happened. Um, a little bit after 8.30, we got a, received a phone call on campus of a threat uh, to the campus itself of, of possible bombs being at several locations. Uh, we immediately started working the investigation. We talked to other agencies, tried to get as much information as we could on, on the call, on the numbers that it came back on. Uh, and, and we actually worked through it. We went to talk to the people who took the call and uh, a little bit before 9.30 uh, through discussion with the team, it, the decision was made, let's go ahead and evacuate the building and get people out of the building because that's what the threat was specifically targeted. And so we sent out text and we hit the siren to get everybody's attention and sent out text pretty much at the same time. Uh, we send out when we send out text, it goes to over 69,000 people at this time that we have signed up for. So we felt comfortable getting that information also through Facebook, also through our website, and through the flat screen TVs uh, and the emails that we send out. So we tried to get as much information in as many different ways as we could to try to get people out of the building. And we feel like, as President Howard has already said, we feel like uh, we've checked check buildings and we feel confident that uh, we're safe by going back into the building. Okay, um, that's uh the background, so we'll take President, some President, questions. President Powers, if if the call came in about eight thirty, it's been reported that the alert didn't go out till almost almost ten o'clock. So that would have kind of taken up almost the whole ninety minute window the person supposedly warned about. Why did it take so long? Well, the first thing we do is evaluate the threat. It's easy to make a phone call. The threat, remember, was for uh, danger in the future in the ten to twelve o'clock range. Uh, I was on my uh, balcony far well before ten people were out of the uh, were out of the building. Uh, but the first thing we need to do, the team needs to do, is evaluate what the situation was, and that process goes from there. If the threat had been the something you go off in five minutes, then we then you don't have the time to evaluate. You just have to pull the the, the, the switch. So, so students told us the they were process. Uh, was well in advance of when, when even the threatened danger was uh, uh, in time. Students expressed right. concerns that 15 minutes, <coughs> uh, not enough time to evacuate the entire university. Well, we weren't evacuating the entire university. We were getting students out of the building. That was the threat. So we evaluate every threat as a case. Uh, and the, the message of the students was get out of the building, and, uh, and away from the buildings, there, there is space on the campus. I think that took place very really expeditiously. Was there a particular office? We did, we office? did not try to get students off the campus because that, that, that is a different kind of matter, but that, uh, that was not appropriate given the nature of the threat. Was there a particular office that got the call? When, who actually got that call? I believe the call came into our, the, the, the first threatening call came into our general number okay uh, and then it was uh, the next step is it goes to uh, the command center uh, at police and they start this evaluation process. And I want to make clear if the threat had been something's going to happen in five minutes mm -hmm. that we, we treat every case is it true that this okay. campus has been holding drills with this same scenario recently we heard that from several students reporting that they've undergone a lot of drills, so when this actually happened, they were confused if it was real or a drill. Well, we, one, we clarified that. This, you know, this is not a drill. Um, we trained both our police, uh, our response team, and we trained jointly uh, with uh, the city, uh, APD. Uh, so we do prepare for a whole variety of scenarios. We also periodically have what would be called firearm drills. That is, there are, there are a number of scenarios where you want to get people out of buildings, first of all, and fire, uh, whether it's an individual building or across uh, the campus. Uh, we have not, to my knowledge, we have
have not recently had a student-oriented drill for this particular scenario. But we do uh, make sure that we are both the equipment and the student response to get people out of the at this point, what percentage of buildings have been cleared? At this point, what percentage of buildings have been cleared and deemed safe? We've gone through the buildings, but let me say it, and I cannot go into all of the details. We have been working very closely, both with city, uh, state, and federal authorities. And there is a lot of information that comes from that. We know a great deal of detail about the nature of this phone call. Has can, the can caller been detailed? Let me finish. We are very confident. Can, can someone detail what the that the campus is safe? So it's, it, it's going through buildings and a lot of other information. Has the caller been detained? Do we know? Is he in custody, whether it's federal, state, local? Is he in custody? Not that I know of. Can I someone detail what the... Not, not that I know of. Can someone detail exactly what the caller said, how he said it? Um, uh, Basically, it's what I said earlier. We're not going to get into the verbatim. That's kind of part of our investigation with what we have done. But it's pretty much what I said earlier, that, that there is a threat to the campus. Could you clarify the timing question a little bit? The statement the university sent out uh, uh, said that the call came in around 835 and warned of a 90-minute uh, detonation time. And you spoke of a 10 to 12 o'clock window. 90 minutes would take you to 10.05. And some of the students said they didn't hear um, about anything until shortly before uh, 10. The, my understanding of the threat was that starting in the 90 to, to uh, hour, 90 to were the buildings uh, that were evacuated on, on that basis? Were the buildings that were evacuated, were they classrooms or were there dorms or was it a mix? It was all of the buildings. The threat, that was, the threat was unspecified and therefore, uh, you know, if we get a threat, there's a, a bomb or chemicals in a particular building, we'll evacuate that building. This was unspecified, so we evacuated, again, not the campus, but all of the so is there anything more that you can tell us about why you're sure that they're the same? They were concerned about the non-specific nature of the warning, too. They, it just said there's a danger you should get as far away from buildings as you can. Some took that to mean leave campus, others were standing next to buildings. What is that, is, in the future might there be more specificity? Why, why was it so general? Yeah, we, we evaluate and debrief the response uh, on every one of these incidents. And we always learn things where we can uh, be clearer in the future. I'll just give an example. When we had the shooter on the campus, sirens, text messages, we had uh, voice messages over the sirens. And we got reports back that the reverberation and sometimes the unclarity, just the audio unclarity of that can create confusion. So we used the sirens this time to make warning and then made our uh, text messages uh, which we have uh, uh, 67,000 uh, of them. We have social media, which goes beyond uh, beyond that. Uh, we always try to be as clear as we can, um, a appropriate given the circumstances. Yep. I was there when we crafted these. We try to make them as clear as we can. Uh, if there was unclarity in one, we will look into that. But I think uh, I, I was I was out on the terrace, and when those messages went out, people were clearing the buildings and getting away from the buildings, and they were not leaving. President, when you receive the back here, do you know anything about the other university campuses in the nation? Was this the same call? <clears throat> um, we have information on that. I think those are the things that go into the investigation. Uh, we certainly don't want to give our entire evaluation game plan out to people who might make calls in the future. The caller was uh, described. We, we've, we have we have investigated them. The caller was described as having a Middle Eastern accent. Why was that information released? Was that prudent to the uh, to the decision to evacuate the campus? Uh, we would have evacuated the campus. 
with any call, if during our evaluation or oh, evacuating the buildings, if in any call, when the danger was approaching, we, we were not confident that it was not credible. I'm just curious uh, about the decision so, to release for a UT official to release that in uh, the I, statement describing it. I, 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 I don't have information. Do we know where the call originated from? Like, was it a local call, possibly, or out of state? Do we know? Mm -hmm. Out of the country? So I think that gets into the investigative part of it, but I think uh, both our friends of the federal government and, and the APD and the Park Police Department. Is it possible? Uh, what, what we don't talk about are response plans at, at that level. But it's kind of might, might, might the, uh, the what's happening globally right now have gone into this decision? I mean, you imagine you get threats that aren't taken quite seriously. I, certainly, the global situation would be part of what we would look at, and the federal government would look at, what the state and the uh, local authorities would look at when you're evaluating any. That was part of the evaluation. There's a bomb threat in San Antonio at 8, there's a bomb threat in San Antonio at 8 a.m. and then apparently this call came in at 8.35. So were you guys warned about that by federal authorities and that, that's why it maybe delayed getting this alert out to students? I did not, I have heard that subsequent to us getting the threat. I, did, I, I don't know that we got any word of that before we got the threat. Okay. Thank you, you got the last one. Going back to how long it, you waited before sending out the alert to students, do you have any concern that you waited so long that if, if there had been an explosion at 10 o'clock or at possible time, students might not have been safe? Will you rethink how you do that in the future? I think students were safe. So we always reevaluate how we're responding to the situation. Uh, so we always reevaluate. I think our students will say during the entire incident. Can you tell us in what manner the buildings were cleared? Was it canines? Was it uh, machines? What was it? It was a combination of those. But I want to emphasize our uh, response that we are now safe comes from a lot of intelligence. Who will be leading the investigation? In addition to physically. Uh, so many were initial searches happening before students were alerted? Were initial searches happening in the buildings before students were alerted to evacuate? We, we were looking at working with our building managers to do this. Thank you. Is local or state or federal doing the investigation? On the All, the All the above. All the agencies. Can you that? Well, will this affect ad drop for students since today is the 12th class day? Let me answer that if I can. There will be a number of things like that that we'll have to look okay. at. Somebody had a quiz. That afternoon, the paper was due. Now we're clear. We are going out to the staff. They will be able to use emergency leave. They'll be held harmless on this. And we will be very flexible, making sure that uh, we we'll work with, with student organizations and with students to make sure that we solve them. I don't know the answer to your particular okay. but uh, that will be sort of the next step.